Week 9 of Friday Night Rivals takes us back into the Parkland Conference, a seeding showdown, if you will, as the Pewaukee Pirates get set to take on the homestanding New Berlin Eisenhower Lions. Good evening, everyone, along with Hall of Famer Terry Kelly, John Weiser with you as we get set for our season finale of Friday Night Rivals. And as you can tell, elements might play a part in this here tonight. A lot of times this season we've had trouble with the sun in our eyes. N not a problem tonight. <laughs> not at all. Pewaukee coming in as the reigning Division Three state champion, 6-2 and two record, and uh, their two losses to a couple of powers. Yeah, they, I mean, when you look at uh, who they've lost to and you consider it, you know, you run into Brookfield Central, who's having an outstanding year. Catholic Memorial, whom they gave a really tough game to. You know, we know how strong they are. For New Berlin, Eisenhower, I think they would like to have one more game back, and that was just a couple of weeks ago against New Berlin West. West. Everything that could go wrong went wrong that night, and so everybody else, you know, it's been a close game. They had an opening drive of 15 plays against Memorial until the roof kind of caved in. So we'll see how this plays out here tonight. As I said, there is something at stake here, and that is seeding into the playoffs. If uh, Pewaukee wins, they will have a second-place finish. If uh, New Berlin-Eisenhower wins tonight, that will force a tie for second place. Right. So both teams know they're in the playoffs, no pressure there. But now what you're playing for is seeding to get a better matchup in that opening round. Let's take a look at some of the players we will be keeping an eye on for you tonight. We'll start first with Pewaukee and Logan Schill, the wide receiver. Logan Schill, three-sport athlete. Better than that, last year he earned all-conference honors at three different positions in football. Maybe the most important player tonight might be their running back, Andrew Jones. Tremendous speed, leading ground gainer for Pewaukee this year. On defense for the Pirates, Ryan Borkman at defensive back. Ryan's a two-way player. Uh, second leading tackler on the team. Another Ryan, Ryan Sandvik, the defensive end. Uh, Ryan, honorable mention all-conference last year, both offensively and defensively on the line. When we talk about New Berlin Eisenhower, we're talking about offensively their quarterback, Matt Collicott. Matt Collicott, excellent runner. He's part of a little three-headed monster. Zach Clark is their running back. He may be important tonight. Zach Clark, they've got three guys. Also includes uh, Addison Tez. About 450 yards apiece for each of those gentlemen. On defense for the Lions, Nick Foster inside linebacker. Nick Foster's got 46 tackles coming into tonight's game. Tell me about that senior outside linebacker. James Yeager, leading tackler on the team all over the field. You're going to see him also on offense. Neither team really throws the ball all that much, so the ground game is going to be important tonight. We're on a grass field. We'll see how the elements play a part into this one as well. When we come back, we'll visit with Mike McGivern, and he'll have both head coaches for us as we continue prior to week nine of our Friday Night Rivals right here on My24. Welcome back.
Welcome back to the Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week presented by Landmark Credit Union. I'm Mike McGivern alongside the two head coaches tonight's game. Matt Kern from New Berlin Eisenhower, Justin Frisky from Pewaukee. Justin, I'm going to start with you. You know, we talk about uh, taking things in sections, right? You guys start off um, beginning, and, and probably by game two, you learn so much about your kids, and then you get into the, kind of the meat of the, the, the schedule, and now the last regular season, how much do you, have you learned about these kids maybe the last two weeks? Well, I think we've learned a lot, and, you know, we started the year with a lot of inexperience. We have a sophomore starting quarterback, so it's been a really steep learning curve for him, especially early. Uh, and some guys who were seniors that didn't have a lot of experience, and so... Having the chance to play Brookfield Central early and then CMH early in the conference slate was really good for us. It, it showed us what we need to work on, and uh, I think we're starting to clean some things up, but obviously, you know, every week's a new adventure. Hey, Coach, uh, Matt, it's good to see you. Uh, thanks for having us tonight. Same question. You know, I, when I talk to football coaches, they, they always talk about learning a lot about their team early and then, again, late, and, and now we're late. I'm wondering about your group. Well, I mean, similar to Pewaukee, we've got 10 seniors that start for us both sides of the ball so it's I think coming into the season you always have an idea what you think you're going to be and then it evolves and and you know in our case the schedule was a little bit flipped to some of our tougher games here in middle and late part of the season so um, I, I think mainly what we've learned is that um, we're a tough-minded group um, and the, the guys just need to learn how to play a full game you know I think that's hey, been the biggest struggle for us. hey guys this and I'll ask you the same question just at this time of year you know you guys both obviously have had a lot of success in the playoffs um how, what do you, how much do you change what you do on a day-to-day -day basis um practice wise uh, in the weight room and in the classroom uh not much I, I think kids like kids respond well to routine and if, especially if you're being successful with the routine, it's, it's easy to stick with it. I think, I guess, if anything, uh, maybe we pare back some of the contact at practice and, and actually look for ways to take some time out just because kids are starting to get a little worn out and, and it's getting long. But the routine itself doesn't change too much. Hey, Coach, say, same question for you. Shorten practices at all or, or do more, uh, more film work? Well, I think there's some of that, but it's really about tightening everything up and shortening practice, but being as efficient as you can be with doing it and just maintaining a – I guess a real focus on execution and uh, not really staying out there longer than you have to. Uh, at some point, you know who you are and the kids know what they need to do. And so uh, you get in, you get your work done, and you get out of there and you get them on the film. I think we can learn a lot about people watching film and uh, we don't need to bang each other up in practice. So we just need to be students of the game at this point in the season and really try to just sharpen our execution. Hey, I got to believe you guys will be watching tomorrow when the brackets come out, things like that. Good luck tonight. It's really good to see you guys. And, again, thanks for having us. Um, we're going to get to a break. Other side of the break, Terry Kelly, John Weiser, who gets you the call of the game only on My24. This is John checking one, two, Eisenhower, Ike, and Pewaukee tonight. Terry, beautiful evening here, sunny and uh, no rain, yes. And before we kick off tonight's ball game, let's take a look at the keys to the game this evening. We'll start first with Pewaukee. Now, Pewaukee would like to force Ike to pass, not their forte. 
They want to be efficient on first down, and they want to block one to two punts, something they've been rather uh, good at this year. And for Eisenhower tonight. They have to control the clock. They want to make sure they keep the ball away from Pewaukee. They need to force some turnovers, and they can't allow the big plays. Eisenhower won the toss. They will defer to the second half. Our kickoff's brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. On the return, far side. That is Austin Farah. Takes it out across the 30, out to about the 35. Piles still moving forward. And finally brought to the turf. Led by Zach Clark on special teams for Eisenhower. Kind of looked like a rugby scrum as they were moving up the field. <laughs> yeah. Here's the offense tonight for Pewaukee. Owen Doberstein at quarterback. We mentioned Andrew Jones, the running back here tonight, but we will see Matthew Shashelsik running the football to get things started at fullback tonight. Yeah, Jones uh, is a two-way player, and so they'd like to try to give him a little break. First and 10 from the 36 for the Pirates. In white, the Vikings all purple tonight. They will hand it off, picking his way up the middle. Alvarado with Kieran, takes a ball across the yard line. Alvarado. Take a look at the Eisenhower defense here this evening. We'll set the defense for you. It's a four down lineman. 4-4 four, four look with three defensive backs. We mentioned uh, the inside linebacker, Nick Foster, 46 tackles already this season. Matt Collicott, the quarterback, doubles up as the strong safety for the Eisenhower Lions. Second down and nowhere to go. No running room. That front able to make a stop there Logan Schill with his first carry tonight brought down by Josh Isbell interior lineman for Eisenhower yeah Josh 6'2 295 kind of the anchor in the middle of that uh, defensive front for the Eisenhower Lions sets up third and short third and three for Pewaukee there you look at Justin Frisky the head coach for the Pewaukee Pirates as the line will get set Third and three from the 43. They'll swing it out near side. Schill makes the catch. We'll pick up the first down out near midfield. Logan Schill on the reception. Brought down on the play by Dylan Penner and James Yeager. And we get our first first down of the game. Brought to you by Best Electric. Well, we mentioned that both teams are not uh, looking to go through the air, especially tonight. And matter of fact, Logan Schill is the only player on Pewaukee that has double-digit catches on the season. Our first downs brought to you by Best Electric Service. Best Electric Service, connect with the best. From just across the midfield stripe at the Eisenhower 49-yard line. They will hand it off. Brockman tries the right side. Nothing there. A purple wall that time. Luke Wagner leading the charge for Eisenhower. Pickup of a yard makes it second down and nine. They'll give him one. Sets up second and nine for Pewaukee. One of the things that we'll note on both teams tonight, they both have a number of players going both ways. For New Berlin Eisenhower, they have eight players going both ways. Pewaukee has seven. Second and nine from the 48. They will pass. Doberstein. Rolls right, plants, fires high, and incomplete. Thank you for Kuglich out there on that far side. A little too much adrenaline maybe on that pass that time. Yeah, the receiver was open right away and didn't quite get uh, the feet set and get that pass completed. Justin Frisky, also the offensive coordinator and head coach. You can see him shiggling in the plays. See what he's got dialed up here on third and nine from the Lion 48-yard line. Well, usually they like to look to shill in long yes. yardage situations. We shall see. They'll roll. Doberstein out, looking to come back the near side, and he's going to be sacked back at the 45-yard line. Nick Foster, the senior, we highlighted him in our pregame, comes up with the big play of the game. 46 tackles coming into tonight, and uh, big key play there. Another look. Was trying to set up a screen back to the left side. 
Yeah, they use Schill as kind of the decoy downfield, and uh, Eisenhower stayed alert to that. Logan Schill is the punter. High snap. Schill able to get it down and gets it away. And Eisenhower will get away from it, takes a Pewaukee bounce. They'll try and down it before it gets to the end zone, and they do. Well, folks are probably wondering why that wasn't a roughing the kicker, but because of the bad snap and everything, he now turned into a runner, and so the contact wasn't considered a penalty. 47-yard punt down at the one. And that's where Eisenhower will start their first drive tonight. Offensively, Matt Collicott, the quarterback, 5'11", 190-pound senior. Madison Tebbs, the running back. Zach Clark also in that kind of three-pronged attack in that backfield. There you get a look at the offensive starters tonight. A couple of wrestlers on that offensive line. They'll try the left side. Nice run by Kalakon. Gives him some room. Second time we've seen that scrum appearance in the game so far. Here's the Pirate defense. Three-man front for Pewaukee. We talked about Sandvik, already 39 tackles on the season at defensive end. And Borkman, honorable mention all-conference at outside linebacker last year, moving to free safety this year. Gain of five, second and five for New Berlin-Eisenhower. Collicott will hand it off. Nice run up the left side, close to a first down. Nice little run that time by Zach Clark, 5'8", 170-pound senior, approaching 500 yards rushing this year. Yeah, we mentioned one of the keys for Eisenhower was controlling the clock, and they've got three backs, as we mentioned, that have all rushed for about 450 yards apiece. So you can't key just one guy. And this is shaping up to be a night on the ground with the rain and a natural grass surface here. Up the middle, big hole out across the 25-yard line. Addison Tevs, the senior, he's also approaching 500 yards. Carter Pearson able to make the stop. One of the things you saw them do, Eisenhower put trips to the wide side of the field and right away gave the ball right up the middle. They want to spread that defense out, create some seams. Back. They'll mark it at the 29-yard line, first and 10, best electric service first down for New Berlin Eisenhower. Okay, but you can... Tevs nowhere to go. Pewaukee ready that time. Pirates on defense looking really good. Nick Borkman, who goes both ways, the outside linebacker, able to make the stop. Some very good speed on that Pewaukee defense. A number of these guys were on a... Uh, state finalist in the 4 by 100 relay last spring. Justin Frisky is uh, serving as an assistant coach on that track team. And he said it's a nice way to wed two programs that can be beneficial to each other. Collicott, through eight games, has only attempted 66 passes. They stack the box here on second and 10. And a timeout taken by the Lions. They didn't like what they saw there. There were eight, nine guys up in the box. And we will take a break. 6.02 remaining here in our first quarter. A scoreless first quarter, first possession for New Berlin Eisenhower when we return to our Friday night rivals here on My24.
Weeknights, watch two of your favorite television families for some dinnertime delights. First, it's an hour of the Goldbergs at 5, then catch the Baxters on Last Man Standing at 6 here on My24. Scoreless ball game midway through our first quarter. New Berlin Eisenhower taking a timeout. They started this drive on their own one-yard line after Pewaukee took the opening kickoff. Drive stalled out on a sack at midfield. Eisenhower facing a second and 10 from their own 29. Collicott will hand it off. Tebbs again powers his way up the middle for a couple. Let's head to the sideline, our first visit tonight with Mike McGivern. So guys, the coaching staff here at Eisenhower, the Crowleys and, and Kazabowskis and Matt Kern, guys been around a while. And then when you walk in, you get a chance to, to read about Jeff Setz. And if you've been around New Berlin Eisenhower when he was alive, he was the guy. Football and softball. And I can tell you, a lot of people here still miss Jeff Setz and what he meant to, to, to athletics here at New Berlin Eisenhower. He was a good man. One of the best, Mike. Thank you for bringing that up tonight. One of the great guys in high school athletics, definitely. Well, here we are, third and six from the 33. Collicott under pressure. Gets rid of it near side. It's broken up and complete. Intended here on the near side. Looking for Zach Clark. Broken up by Ryan Borkman. Closed captioning tonight. Brought to you by LifeLock. That's LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Well, the pirate defense coming up big. Be able to force a punt here. Get their second possession of the night. Addison Tebbs does the punting for Eisenhower. Well, a big concern for Eisenhower was the way that Pewaukee comes after the punt. We'll see what they put together on this one. Ten guys in the box. Gets this one away. Away from Schill. It'll bounce to the far sideline. Out of bounds inside the Pewaukee 30-yard line. They'll mark it out at the 28. Let's take a visit now with our friends at Landmark Credit Union. Welcome to tonight's game. I'm Matt Seltzer, branch manager with Landmark Credit Union. Once again, Landmark Credit Union is proud to be a sponsor of the Friday Night Rivals game of the week on My24. We're proud to show our support for local schools and to give back to the communities we serve. At Landmark Credit Union, our job is to be there for our members for every Landmark moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, we can help. Visit us online or at one of over 30 branches, including locations near the two schools playing tonight. You can learn more at LandmarkCU.com. Coming around the right side with it, Logan Schill, and he is stopped for no gain. Good job by the New Berlin defense. Spiro Pera was right there, but they strung that out nicely. Yeah, they're able to run them to the sidelines, you know, use your sideline as your second teammate to the outside, and they did that. Gain of one, second and nine. Ball at the 29-yard line of Pewaukee. Send a couple of receivers here to the near side. And flags our first penalty of the ball game tonight. Offsides, offense, number 35. Five-yard penalty, second down. Tight end Matt Kuglich, the guilty party. Senior, a couple of catches this year. Also an outstanding track on that 4 by 100 Pewaukee track team. Yeah, Pewaukee's been making its living this season on the ground. You can, you know, they've got four or five different guys carrying the ball. Second down and 15. They'll put Schill the flanker here as a slot receiver near side. Doberstein rolling, throwing. Has Schill there, and Schill has it broken up. And Schill... Took a shot trying to go for that football. Broken up by Matt Collicott, who's also the quarterback for New Berlin Eisenhower. Yeah, we, we mentioned early on that both teams have a number of guys going both ways. And 
You know, we referenced uh, the opening game with uh, the opening series with Memorial where Eisenhower marched down the field, 15-play drive, but starting in the second quarter, they just could not compete against the team that was able to two-platoon. And we'll see tonight, it's kind of even up with both these, and we'll see how it plays out. Total of, what, 15, 16 players going both yeah. ways between the two teams here tonight, so... Third and 14, ball placed at the 24-yard line. Aberstein in trouble, gets it away low, incomplete as it hits the turf in front of Logan Schill, the intended target. The weather playing a part on the last two passes. He underthrew Schill here on the near sideline, and that time threw that one low, bringing up fourth down. You know, so far Eisenhower has been getting, you know, good results with their defense, and we said they wanted to possess the ball, see if they can extend that drive this time. Schill to kick it away. Bounce to the sideline, gets past Zach Clark, and will roll out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. They'll mark it at the 28-yard line, looks like. Well, better starting position yes. than they had last time. Don't forget, coming up tonight, we will highlight the hit of the game. That's brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. They have had one early. We'll see. It's in the running, as they say. First and 10 for the Lions at their own 26 yard line. Clark in motion. Collicott will keep it. The quarterback trying the left side. We'll get a couple. Gain of about four on the play for Collicott. Now coming into tonight's game, Kalika had carried the ball 85 times already. That's uh, heavy numbers for your quarterback. Four yards. Makes it second down and six. And again, they split this rushing up. 400, 500 yards for Kalika. Another 500 for Tez. Clark with approaching 500 yards on the ground. So it's a, a kind of a three-headed attack here on the ground. Tez. Nice tackle in the backfield that time. Beautiful play there. Broke Charlie Opie there to make the stop for Pewaukee with a flag on the on the play as well. Bowling, offense, the to climb. Third down. They'll take the play with the loss. Loss of two yards on the so play. loss of two. Third down and 12. Nope. Check it. Third down and eight. Our officials tonight, we thank them. And that uh, they get into their second season, too. They're evaluated on how well they right. perform as they get into the playoffs now, starting next weekend. Well, we'll see if Eisenhower goes with a pass look and then has Collicott keep the ball on the draw. Pirates will blitz up the middle here. Mm -hmm. Collicott breaks free. Simmons out of one tackle. Going to be close to a first down. They sent the middle linebacker that time on the blitz. Corkman was there. We'll take one more look. That was a draw the way you could see. But he gave a nice fake to set that up. So time has been called as they'll bring the sticks in from across the way. He's just going to have enough, I believe, by the tip of the football. Let's see. Just that short. Okay, I'm one for one this year. Okay, Sean? <laughs> Would you have gone to Vegas and bet on that like I, Sean did I, last week? I, I don't know. Fourth and five links on that chain. That's what we've got here from the 36-yard line. Yeah. 
Tight splits across. Collicott under center. He will keep it. And Collicott will get the first down. Line everybody up tight. Go on two. Pick up the first down. Matt Collicott gets our best electric service first down. Late here in this scoreless first quarter. Well, I saw they brought Luke Wagner, uh, one of their backers, into the game at running back as well, mm-hmm. trying to find a way to spell these guys a little bit. Wagner, number four in there to the left of the quarterback, Calicott. And we'll give it to Tebbs. Tebbs around the left side. Get about three on the play to about the 40-yard line. Andrew Jones was right there. Jones was honorable mention all-conference. Played defensive end. They've moved him out to inside linebacker. Did not see that flag come down. And a holding call twice on this drive now. This one accepted by the Pirates. We'll move the football back inside the New Berlin Eisenhower 30 yard line. Yeah, a little game of field position now, trying to judge, you know, when is it worthwhile taking the penalty? How soon do you want to get the ball back? Defensive coordinator Mike Lecker, you know, in his uh, 54th season of coaching football, 52 at Pewaukee. It's good to see him again. We saw him. I think it was at the scrimmages early this year, <laughs> back you, in August. So what are you guys yeah, doing here? Exactly. Well, you're going to be on TV, Mike. <laughs> it's at the clock for 48 seconds. I want to add 10 more seconds to the clock. 48. Always great to see Coach Lechner, though. I tell you, he's got a story or two every time. His son, Mike Jr., yes. is also on the staff helping. And they've got uh, uh, two, Jeff and uh, Joe Grabo, another father-son duo. First and 20. Tevs around the left side. Good job by the Pirates to string that out for minimal gain. Ushering him to the boundary was Ryan Sandvik. Well, we mentioned that Sandvik had got an honorable mention at both offensive and defensive line a year ago and so you know we keep talking about these two-way guys it'll be interesting to see which which group tires out uh, is it going to be eisenhower or is it going to be Milwaukee? they're going to spread them out here single back four receiver look here and they'll hand it off again that was Luke Wagner. Talked about him getting in there, spelling some time at running back. That had a good run. Gets some of that back, makes it a little bit more manageable now. Third and ten. Carter Pearson was there to make the tackle. Yeah, both coaches are very conscious of you know their players. So trying to keep them fresh. This will end our first quarter here in New Berlin tonight. We're at Eisenhower High School. Eisenhower and Pewaukee scoreless after one.
With Mike McGivern, Terry Kelly, John Weiser with you from New Berlin. Eisenhower, quarter number two in this Parkland Conference battle here tonight. Lions facing a third and ten from their own 38. Backfield empty. Collicott on a draw. And he's going to get to the 40, and that's it for a gain of two. Bringing up fourth down, Andrew Jones, once again the inside linebacker there to make the tackle. Brings up fourth down. You know, you look at Pewaukee, you always think of their offenses, but so far defensively this year, they've only given up 88 points on the season. So punt formation here. Addison Tevs does the punting. Logan Schill back to receive, and it's an end-over-end kick. And then Schell will let it hit the ground and roll dead at the 42-yard line. A short punt. 22-yard punt. And so, 32-yard punt, excuse me. So it will be Pewaukee ball here early in this second quarter. Still looking for our first touchdown. Our touchdowns tonight are being brought to you by Planet Fitness, the judgment-free zone. Well, on the season, Pewaukee's rush for approximately twice as many yards as they've gained passing. So we know what they'd like to do, and we'll see whether the weather inhibits that much as we proceed. Our first down is brought to you by Best Electric Service. Carter Pearson around the left side. Driven back. Got maybe two out to about the 34-yard line. Addison Tebbs was there along with Chase Ewell. The Pewaukee's been very conscious of not trying to run the scores up on a couple of the teams at the bottom of this division. They, they've had 19 guys have had carries in games so far. 11 different guys have scored touchdowns. Well, Justin Frisky is pretty conscious of that. He is all about participation and giving kids an opportunity. Try and run it around the right side here, get it out across the 35. Collicott was there to make the stop. He has one pass break up tonight along with that tackle. Good gang tackling that time. Get a good look at Matt Shashelshik. 3.9 GPA, the senior fullback. Milwaukee trying to defend that Division Three title from a year ago. Parkland crowning two state champions last year. Third and three. They'll run the reverse. The ball's on the ground. It'll be a scoop. And won't get it to the end zone, but what a nice play by Josh Isbell. Or Spiro Para, excuse me. Para on the fumble recovery for New Berlin Eisenhower. They're going to try a reverse, Coach. Neither player had full control. And then Para, a 30-yard return to the 14. And that was actually a play they were having trouble running on Wednesday at practice. Mm -hmm. A couple different fumbles. Well, our first venture into the Salvation Army Red Zone. This season when the team gets inside their opponent's 20, they enter the Salvation Army Red Zone. Salvation Army doing the most good. And again, to volunteer, go online, samilwaukee.org. Collicott, and he's going to be wrapped up. Taken down in the backfield by Brennan Dusler. Dusler, the senior. 14 tackles now on the year. That's his second tackle for a loss. Loss of two on the play. Yeah, moved real well. He's 6'2", 275, another one of those two-way players. Spotted at the 16, second down, 12. Lions trying to take advantage of the first takeaway tonight. Almost three receivers to the right. Tevs, and they were ready, wrapped up almost immediately. Getting in there on that stop was a Jackson Service. I think Pewaukee realizes that that trips formation is only to try to set up the inside run. 
So gain of one makes it third and 11. And Spiro Perez fumble recovery down to the 14. Lions trying to take advantage of the first turnover tonight. Run it up the middle, Tevs. Ball came out, but he was down. He'll spot it at the 10. Bring up fourth down. Carter Pearson credited with that tackle. And it looks like Luke Bacherman, the junior, coming on for a field goal attempt where he is one for two this season. Now he's been 29 for 29 on his extra points. We'll see if this is within his range. Aiden Vanderboom is the holder. Josh Isbell, the long snapper. 27-yard attempt. They spun it around, and it's through. 27-yard field goal, second one of the year for Luke Bacherman, the junior. A nice kick on a wet field. Credit the holder, Aiden Vanderboom, for getting that ball down, spinning the laces away. Well, one of the keys to the game, we said, for Eisenhower was forcing some turnovers. And so that one they were able to capitalize and get a field goal. So the fumble recovery by Spiro Perra set up that drive. We head downstairs to Mike McGivern, our Salvation Army interview. Hey, guys, I'm here with Steve Woodard. He's got a good arm. What's awesome is he's got this bell, and I told him, bring this thing out. Man, when the weather gets like this, you're looking for a lot of people to be doing that. Absolutely. We need volunteers to help the Salvation Army out and ring bells. They can ring for a couple hours. It'd be great to help us do it. We raise funds for Coats for Kids, Christmas Toy Shop, Christmas Family Feast, but they can sign up with the Salvation Army at samilwaukee.org. Hey, Steve, uh, when I talk to people that, that do this year in, year out, they say, look, we get way more out of this than we give back to Salvation Army. Do you hear that from people? Absolutely. It's yeah. something that you can know that you're doing something great for somebody else, but it's a fun time to be out there. But you know you're making a difference in a family's life for eternity. Amen to that. Hey, it's really good to see you. I love yeah. having you out. That bell is uh, it's perfect. Boys, yeah. back to you. Tis the weather. Tell you what, feeling a little bit more like we're getting closer to the holidays. Forkman breaks it to the outside to the 40 yard line. Nice return. Pewaukee with good field position. James Yeager was there to able to make the stop for New Berlin Eisenhower. Now Borkman using a little bit of that track speed. Got it got clogged up in the middle there, and so he was able to sprint to the outside. Owen Doberstein, the quarterback, 6'1", 185. Also a baseball player. Got some great experience last year as a freshman, the final six games of the season, including a playoff games. Forkman, gain of about one. Driven back on the play by Collicott and Foster. Well, Pewaukee went on a tear at the end of last season. They'd lost twice during the regular season to Port Washington uh, early on into Catholic Memorial, but then they went on a run. Mm -hmm. Three consecutive shutouts against Grafton, Plymouth, Whitefish Bay. Then they took out a Monroe squad and in the finals defeated Rice Lake 15-6. And again, we talk a lot about Classic 8 Conference, but Parkland crowned two state champions last year. I'll try the inside handoff, spinning off Borkman. Only a couple again. Good job by the Lions staying home defensively with all of that motion and trickery. Yule and Penner both there. Well, both these teams, you know, are running a version of the wing T, aligned a little bit differently, so they understand how to defend one another. Hey, you go up against it in practice every day. And... Third and seven from the 41 for Pewaukee. 
Try the far side, nothing there as they get it out to Schill. Dylan Penner right there. Play slow to develop and really just slow to get that ball out of there. Allowed Penner to get right up on Schill. Yeah, Dylan was able to read it. Filled quickly. A 5'9", 155-pound senior. Zach Clark back deep for the Lions. Schill the punt. So Schill will punt. Zach Clark standing inside his own 20-yard line. Appears the drizzle has abated here just a little bit. The wind has died down as well. And that will angle out of bounds short of the 25-yard line. They'll mark it out at the 26 when we come back. 3-0 at New Berlin Eisenhower. Week 9 of our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. They've been saving people and hunting things that go bump in the night since 1972. A supernatural love story with blood, guts, and monsters begins Tuesday night at 7. A new series on CW18, The Winchesters, only on CW18. 5.08 to play here in our first half. 3-0 Eisenhower. They have the ball first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Take it up the middle, Collicott, the quarterback. About four on the play, bring up second down and six. Brought down on the play. Well, offensive coordinator Jim Crowley trying to find, uh, you know, what's the key to get this thing unlocked. Meanwhile, his brother Sean is a... Uh, the defense coordinator, neither of the gentlemen teach at the school. One's a banker and one's a former policeman. Second and four from the 34. Collicott, option. Trying to get the edge. And Tevs had a little bit of a hole there, but just could not quite get it upfield quick enough. It closed almost immediately as it opened up. Dress Dussler, I should say. Dusler, excuse me, Brennan Dusler there to little, make the stop. little different wrinkle for them running the option on that, and, and that spacing between the quarterback and the pitch man just wasn't quite right to be able to really bust it. Our closed captioning tonight brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock, identity theft protection starts here. Approaching four minutes to play here in this first half. First down here for New Berlin Eisenhower. Collicott wrapped up in the backfield. Good job. Again, it was Jackson Service. Second tackle in this drive for Service. Service at practice this week was just a thorn in the side of the offense trying to run the plays. Only a sophomore. Only sophomore is really getting time for Pewaukee. And family might be looking different as Uncle Scott happens to be the manager of the Mariners. Uh -huh. And uh, his father... Brad was a uh, All-State player when he was at Westby and went on to North Dakota State. So good bloodlines in that service family. Tevs up the middle for a couple. Spotted at the 42. Brings up third and long. 
for Eisenhower. Under three minutes to go now in our first half. One of the changes uh, Pewaukee's made, they've taken their uh, center, Egan Porter, number 74, and they've put him on the line, trying to stiffen that up a little bit. They've got him at uh, kind of a fourth lineman in there, actually playing more nose guard right now, right over the ball. Third and eight, Collicott scrambles. Will go down as he started to throw the ball. They'll rule him down before he got it away. It's Andrew Jones with the sack. Take another look here, being chased from behind by Jones, and yes, the knee was down before he delivered that football. Yes. Good job by our replay crew, our camera crew here Ex at My24. Excellent job, and you saw that speed that mm. time by Jones. He's the leadoff runner on that 4x100 relay. So timeout taken here. Pewaukee takes the timeout. Each team now with two remaining. Pirates want to get this football back with some time on the clock here. That reminds us that coming up will be the National Guard Halftime Report. We will highlight this week's Scholar Athlete nominees and meet our landmark Booster of the Game Award recipients. That's all coming up at halftime. The National Guard Halftime Report. One of the concerns for head coach Matt Kern was how well Pewaukee blocks punts we mentioned that earlier in the broadcast as well as extra points and field goals so I'm sure they're going to try to put some pressure on here flip that this field real quickly Tev's the punter through his hands able to get it away Shill with the running start on that catch across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Brought down by Vanderboom and Para. Tommy Para there. So good field position here for the Pirates. They'll spot it at their own 46. We take another look. Went right through the fingertips, but had the presence of mind to recover. Keep his wits about him and got it away before Jones came running in. Put some pressure. Second time we've seen a snap kind of go awry on kicks tonight. So a little damp. From their own 47. Trying to get the edge here on the near side. And Shulchik on the carry. Brought down by Jaeger. Be a loss of two back to the 45 yard line. Another look. Jaeger's also a basketball player, and you see him stringing this out, working from the inside out on that. 47 tackles on the year, three of them for a loss and two interceptions. They'll work it on the near hash. 45-yard line, second and 12. Play fake. They'll dump it out over the middle. In traffic, catch made. Big gain as they hit Matt Kuglich. He'll take it all the way down to the 31-yard line of New Berlin Eisenhower. Collicott finally got him down. That's Kuglich, only Kuglich's fourth reception on the year. He does have one catch for a touchdown. He did a nice job on the play fake. and Great job there by Kuglich to separate from the two defenders. They'll mark it at the 29. 24-yard pickup. Robertstein rolling. Blitz coming and down he goes. Oh, you could see that develop. Luke Wagner, the outside linebacker, with the sack. And Doverstein is down. Slow to get up. And time called here. We'll take another look. 
You never saw him. He was trying to set up something left and able to fall back on the football. He was able to roll back yeah. onto the ball. Well, defensive pointer Sean Crawley picked the perfect time to send that blitz. Pewaukee took the timeout. They have one remaining, 36 seconds to play in the half. They'll be facing a second and 21. You see Justin Frisky, the head coach, also the offensive coordinator. Second down and 21. And you want to protect the ball here. And don't have to get it all back here. Again, they send the blitz. Doberstein in trouble, able to get away in the air. Again, it's his tight end, Kuglitz, who makes the catch back near the 31-yard line. James Yeager was there, and Pewaukee will take their final timeout here with 21 seconds to play. Owen oh, Doverstein, you know, walking with a little gingerly, Ooh. took a yet another hit. Like there was a little inadvertent face mask there as he tried to break away, but another nice catch by Kuglich that's two on this drive now. A little more manageable here, third and 11. But down to only 21 seconds. Uh. So if you're Pewaukee, probably looking to maybe get this ball to the outside to one of the edges here, probably Shill would be the guy I'd be looking for here. Get him out of bounds. Try and run some sort of a route right to the stick. If not, get out of bounds where they might be able to attempt a field goal here late. Yeah, try to get it in position for Jack Kaiser, who's got uh, four out of five field goals this year on his kicks, and he also has been pretty accurate extra point-wise, 32 at 33. Big play for Pewaukee, third and 11 from the Eisenhower 30-yard line. Dobberstein with time. Still looking downfield now. We'll take it down. He'll go down in mid of field. Again, Pewaukee out of timeouts. And again, the rule this year, you can throw that pass away. He can't down it here. And now we got a flag with one second remaining here. This was a break here for Pewaukee if it's against New Berlin Eisenhower. Offense. Offense. Whoa. Five yard penalty. Call that. They called that a little early. How could you have an offside on offense? That would be a false start, right. wouldn't it? You know, he. Coach Frisky is trying to talk to his offense right now before think, they go off the and field. And again, the, the new rule this year in high school football, if you're under duress, the quarterback can throw it away. And that would have saved everything right there. So halftime here in New Berlin. Lions lead it on a 27-yard field goal, 3-0. Our Friday night rivals, week number nine here on My24. Okay. And now taking the field your seven times state okay. champion Eisenhower. All right, thank you.
It's the Wisconsin Army National Guard halftime report here on our Friday Night Rivals. A 3-0 lead for New Berlin Eisenhower. Well, tonight we'd like to highlight our Scholar Athlete nominees brought to you by the great folks at GlaxoSmithKline. From Pewaukee High School, we have Ava Westerman. Ava participates in soccer, golf, basketball, and track. And also carries a 4.143 GPA. She's a member of the state runner-up girls basketball team and also qualified for state in track. Ava is a member of the National Honor Society, a member of the Key Club, and also a member of Best Buddies. Milwaukee Athletic Director Jeff Barron says Ava has an enjoyable disposition and her positive attitude is contagious. From New Berlin, Eisenhower tonight, Luke Nemoyer. Luke competes in football and golf and carries a 4.065 GPA. He achieved high honor roll three years in a row. Luke has competed in varsity golf for three years, varsity football for two years. He is the weightlifting club captain and is a 500 club member for bench and squat. Luke is the NHS vice president, Badger Boys state governor, and qualified for state WSMA all four years in high school. So congratulations to this week's Scholar Athlete nominees. Our weekly nominees now in the running to receive part of $5,000 in scholarship funds provided by the great folks at GlaxoSmithKline. And we thank them for their support of academics here in the high school area here in southeast Wisconsin this season on our Friday Night Rivals. Right now, we'll go downstairs. Mike McGivern has our landmark booster of the game. So, guys, if I sang Sly and the Family Stone, you know, uh, we are family is how I would do this one today. Hey, our partners at Landmark Credit Union are proud, serve and support our local communities. And tonight, we are so honored to recognize two people that have been so very, very big in the booster club here at New Berlin Eisenhower. Um, I, I can tell you this, that, that when Marla and Bill McCormick get involved in something, they get involved. And uh, Marla's been the president for how long? Uh, almost three years. Almost three years. You've been involved in one? Just taking over, yeah, for a year. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, I got to tell you, with, with Landmark Credit Union, as a token of Landmark's appreciation for the hard work that you guys do, um, they would like to present a $500 check to New Berlin Eisenhower Booster Club, and they've got a couple of gifts for you. Landmark cares so much about our community, and they love to highlight people that give back like you guys do. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, if you can, talk a little bit about what it takes to be the president. Well, you know, I have a great um, resource group of parents and other sponsors around here, so it makes it easy when we have a lot of people helping along the way. And, and thank you for saying that because there's so many, you don't do this on your own, obviously. And the people that put that time in, um, they, they care a lot about athletics here at New Berlin Eisenhower as well. Yes, definitely. And the coaches too, the athletic director, everybody here. We just all want it to be a really good experience for the kids. And what made you get involved, if I can ask? Boy, it's just a great program out here. We've got such great teachers, such great clubs, such great sports that it just, it's a good fit for the community and just another way to get involved and help out. Man, that's awesome. Guys, thank you. And Landmark Credit Union really thanks you for all the things that you guys do, the amount of time and sweat equity that you put in, giving back to the community. It's a perfect fit with the people at Landmark. So thank you. Yes, and thank you, too, for Landmark and, and you guys as well. Yeah, thanks a lot. Boys, back to you. Landmark, we thank you again this season for being part of the Booster of the Game Award this year. 3 nothing, New Berlin Eisenhower. Back with more of our National Guard halftime report after this. <laughs> Okie dokie. Not much. I was going to say, yeah, we had a sur search for these. Oh, ooh. That might be our hit of the game. Nominee for the hit of the game. Your drum majors are Lauren Yench and Caleb Frederick. Is your band ready? Ladies and gentlemen, your pride of New Berlin marching band. Thank you. 
That's good. Our National Guard halftime report continues here on my 24 from New Berlin Eisenhower High School. The Lions leading the Pewaukee Pirates 3 0 here at the half. Let's head downstairs once again, Mike McGivern. Hey, um, I'm here with Captain Jordan Olson, U.S. Marine, and I'm talking about a friend of mine, Kevin McKenna's son. He sent me a picture an hour ago in San Diego. Um, so, and he's done now with that first part of being a Marine, and he's so excited about getting through that part. When you're talking to kids here at that age, juniors, seniors in high school, what do you tell them about the first part of this, Jordan? Well, first of all, I just want to say congratulations, because that's one of the most amazing things you can accomplish in the world. Um, but this is an opportunity for all these young men and women to transform themselves from a young man or woman who doesn't know what they're going to do with their life into a put together human being who knows what they're going to do and find success. And you see an amazing transformation. Hey, did it surprise you when I told you that, that told you that this young man decided as a sophomore, this was my path and this is what I'm going to do. And he's never wavered from that. No, no, not at all. Those are the kinds of young men and women that we need in the United States Marine Corps. Those are the people who kind of hold the, like they are the standard bearers for us because they know what they want to do and they're the ones who make a difference for us. Sergio, I just got to tell you, anytime I talk to you guys, um, you're so proud of what you do and so proud of our country and we thank you for the service that, that you have given and you continue to give. No, I just want to say thank you guys because I wouldn't be here without you and I'm just really proud of my community and everything you guys do for us. Sure, thank you very much, man. It's good to see you. No, good to see you as well. Thank you so much for having me on. You got it. Boys, back to you. Mike, thank you, and uh, to Captain Jordan Olson, we thank you for your service as well. We'll take a break. 3 nothing. New Berlin Eisenhower on top of Pewaukee. Week 9 of our Friday Night Rivals on My24. Three nothing. New Berlin Eisenhower on top of Pewaukee. Our National Guard halftime report continues. A couple of Janzacs have joined Mike McGivern down on the sideline. Hey guys, uh, 
best electric. And, and I, Bruce, I talked to Bruce every week, and I said, Bruce, bring your son one of these days. He said he's coming the last one. Man, I appreciate it. Um, you're really proud of the work he does at Best Electric. It's awesome. Father, son, it's a, it's a great family deal, and I just enjoy it. He teaches me stuff every day. Man, that's awesome. Hey, I told you before that, like, when him and I were talking how proud he is of you, and you said my dad was saying that, and we were joking around. Man, congratulations on the great work you're doing at Best Electric. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. i got to tell him to stop saying nice stuff about me. People get the wrong idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? To your face, maybe. He told you, stand up straight, boy. Hey, t- talk a little bit about working for your dad. Look, I've known him a long time, and he cares a lot of our, about our community, gives back every chance he gets. Best Electric, that's part of what you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we really enjoy giving back to the community, doing sponsorships like this, things things that give back to the kids. I was a big sports kid growing up, so a lot of what we do revolves around sports, and it's really uh, part of what he taught me and things like that. Hey, how much do you miss when you get on the sidelines, get to a game? How much do you miss playing? Uh, well, a day like this, not much. Um, <laughs> a, little, a little cold. I liked it warmer. So, But, yeah, I mean, it's uh, you do miss it. Yeah. You do miss it. Hey, man, hold on a second. I thought he was going to be tougher than that, saying it's too cold for that. You, uh, you you miss watching him play. I know he played over at Pies, played a little college ball. Yeah, he, I mean, it was didn't miss a game, didn't miss a play. It was just awesome. My wife and I enjoyed it. It was a great night out. Hey, I really appreciate Look, this is our last week together, and it's so good that I had a chance to, to hang out with you each and every other week. And to thank you for everything you do for not only kids teaching, but certainly for our community. I w- wouldn't have it any other way. Thank Brother, you. thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, it's good to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Thank yeah, you, you bet. That. Best Electric, man. They're doing a great job, boys. Back to you. We want to thank Best Electric Service picking up the first down sponsorships this year. I've seen their ads on TV. They, they, father, son, excellent job there as well. Let's take a look at our highlight package from our first half here tonight. 3 nothing at New Berlin Eisenhower with the lead. And one of our big hits of the game early on, the early sack by Foster, or, yeah, by Nick Foster. Then the fumble really the, led to the only score as Spiro Para picked up that loose ball, took it down to the 14, and a 27-yard field goal. The only score of our game. And then another big sack by Luke Wagner toward the end of our first half. Took, kind of took Milwaukee out of scoring. It took them out of that scoring drive, but hey, the Milwaukee defense just as tough too. You see a couple of big hits from the linebacking core, and a couple of big plays late here to the tight end. Matt Kuglich is yeah. com- almost as many catches tonight as he has in the season. But they ran out of time. We'll take a break when we come back. Second half action on my twenty-four. Okay.
Time now for our community advocates interview. Here's Mike. Thanks a lot. I'm here uh, with Chris Carlson, community Pick advocate. He's a walk show West grad. He's been doing this for four years. Talk a little bit about the name of your company and what you guys do. Yes. So Clean Slate Center has been in Wisconsin now since 2017. We have over 11 locations in Wisconsin, some of the most dire communities that need our help. As far west as La Crosse, far north as Green Bay, and far south as Kenosha right now, all of our centers helping out our community in dire need of alcohol and opioid disorders. Chris, when we were talking during the break, and we, we shared a little bit of some yeah. personal stuff. Man, you lit up, and you said, look, I love what I'm doing for a living, and the passion just came right out. Absolutely. So originally I was in the banking world, finances for about nine years. The last seven years I've been in the field of helping people with alcohol and other drug abuse problems in their lives. Living this is just such a true passion of my mission that I want to continue to do to help other people, really inspiring them to know that in recovery they can live a life better than they're destined to live. Man, I really appreciate it. It's so good to meet you. Hey, keep, keep up the good work. Yes. Boys, back to you. Mike, thank you. Second half kickoff. Our kickoff's brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Eisenhower will get the ball to start the second half. Zach Clark and Aiden Vanderboom are deep. Kaiser with the kick. One hop. Zach Clark, left side. Take it about the 35 yard line. 22 yard return. Landon Wittick. And right there. Well, this has got to be a little bit of a surprise, I think, for fans. Uh, Pewaukee coming into the game had outscored its opponents 143 to 20 in the first quarter. And combination, obviously, of weather, but I think more importantly, Eisenhower's defense. From their own 37, Matt Collicott will direct the offense. He will keep it himself and will struggle to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Good job defensively. Ryan Borkman along with Andrew Jones. Jones in on his sixth tackle tonight. Well, Borkman was an honorable mention uh, selection last year at outside linebacker. Extremely intelligent young man, 3.79 GPA. No gains, second down, 10. And they'll try and come around with Tebbs. And again, the edge sealed off nicely. Jackson Service stayed home, sealed that play off. Actually a tackle for a loss. It'll be back near the 35-yard line. Now, Pewaukee really strung this play out well. You can see number 25, Charlie Opie didn't make the tackle, but he forced that play back inside. So loss of three, third and 13 now for the Lions. They're on 34 yard line. Again, they'll split three receivers to the left side. Collicott looking to throw under pressure, gets it away. Jackson's service chased him out of the backfield, forced him to throw it away outside the tackle box. And so it's a three and out for the Lions to start this second half. Defensive coordinator Mike Lecker had nothing but praise for Jackson's service and said, you know, he, he's going to really be a good player. Well, he's showing as a sophomore, he's doing well now. 6'2", 185, moves well. Madison Tebbs set to punt. Mishandled the snap last time on the punt. We'll have to see how they hold up together. Nine men up front here. Hey. 
Got a piece of it. It'll bounce at midfield. Show will let it roll dead at the 32 yard line. Looks like they got a piece of it that time and they had nine men up on the line of scrimmage. You saw the Lions try and rotate a couple of the protectors. Getting in there was Carter Pearson. Got a hand on it. All things considered, they Eisenhower lucked out there getting the ball off down to the 30-yard line. They'll officially spot it at the 32 for Pewaukee, trailing 3-0 here. Their first possession of the second half. Flags before the snap. Offside. Offense. Number 35. That's twice now. First down. Yeah. Twice that uh, Kuglich has lined up offside. Now, I've always taught if you're a receiver, if you walk to the line, you look, you look to, to the your, official. To the official, he'll let you know if you're good or not. Not much running room there on first and 15. Well, we mentioned the importance of this game for seeding for each of these teams. You know, trying to get, you know, that opponent in that first round that maybe you might have just a little bit more potential to handle. A little bit different this year. They'll have an actual selection show tomorrow morning, Valley Sports Wisconsin. A lot of the schools having there. watch parties. Yep. Find out who's going to be in the playoffs and their opponents. Tomorrow morning, Pearson on the carry, Jaeger there on the stop, the outside linebacker. Good run there, makes it a nice manageable third and a good four here for Pewaukee. Nice job that time by Carter Pearson. A rush for over 370 yards coming into tonight's game. It's got six touchdowns on the year. Forkman coming around the right side. Finds some running room. We'll get the first down across the 45-yard line. Matt Collicott, the safety, brought him down. But looked like he was bottled up. And all of a sudden, found a gap. Right there. Used good speed to get outside of that mess in the middle. First and 10, 45-yard line. From the 45, a Best Electric Service first downs. First downs brought to you by Best Electric Service. Best Electric Service, connect with the best. Bruce Janzek, we thank Janzek family for sponsorship this year. And they'll try it up the middle, not much there. Carter Pearson on the carry, brought down by Seidel and Wagner. Josh Isbell helped kind of stuff the middle a little bit and... Then his teammates came rushing in to put that man on the ground. Pearson carried on that last play. Second down and eight. And the rain we had in the first half has abated. Wind has died down just slightly. Field's still a little bit slick. Well, I think it's our first uh, televised game this year on natural grass. I think you're right. Second down and eight. Oh, Nicolay. Yeah, that was the other one. Robert Stein with time. Oh, and it was double deflected. Kuglich, the intended receiver. Tev's got a piece of it. Let's go downstairs, Mike. Who do you have? Hey, guys, I found somebody special here at the game. <laughs> Aaron Kelly and, and Aaron's grandfather, Terry Kelly's up in the booth. You know, did you know that your grandfather took tap tap lessons as a dance instructor or something when he was a kid? Did you know that? No, he does not dance much at our family <laughs> events. <laughs> hey, can I tell you, he is so proud of you. We talked for a long time. As a student athlete here at Ike, he's just really, really proud of you. I'm a little surprised he didn't teach you tap dance. Yeah, me as well, but he coached me very well for the track season, and I'm excited for this year. 
Hey, the, when he when he talked about you first, he said to me, he said, Max, she's such a great student athlete. Um, the grades, you're doing really well, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. And and you run track. What's your favorite uh, your favorite thing to do in track? Um, probably starting the four by one relays. Hey guys, Erin Kelly, she loves her grandfather, but she swears she has never seen him dance. I said maybe the next wedding. She said probably not. Back to you boys. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much. There's Coach, the proud grandfather right there. I can't. I couldn't. Well, I grew up on the east side of Detroit, and that's something my mother made me do. Fourth grade, I said, that's it. I'm done. This is no uh, no way for me to try to survive. Another little nugget. Aaron told me she is accepted at Carthage College. Yes, she is. They have a great track program down there as well. They'll run the toss. She'll around the left side on the double reverse, and she'll not able to get the first down. Foster chasing him to the boundary. Well, she'll, you know, excellent speed. We've mentioned he's a three-sport athlete, uh, basketball as well as baseball, and uh, got mentioned as a kicker, a defensive back, and as a wide receiver last year on the all-conference team. Well, fourth and five. Shill, who just ran that play, will now drop back to punt. It's going to be a fake. A little rugby punt to the sideline. And now see where the officials will spot this one as it goes out of bounds. I'd actually like to see how close he was to the line of scrimmage when he kicked that. Yeah, it was awfully that, close. It was, and a very short punt. It went out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So the Lions come away with good field position on that stop. Our closed captioning tonight brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection starts here. A little over seven minutes to play here in this third quarter. Close battle here. Lions up by three. They'll start this drive at their own 40. Again, they'll spread out the receivers here. Collicott will hand it off. Tebbs will take it out to the 45 for a gain of five. In on that stop once again was Carter Pearson. That's four tackles for Pearson. Connor Dams also there. Well, the weather has helped you know, each of the teams tonight in terms of its two-way players. It's, you know, it's yeah. not that heat that saps it out of you. Again, they'll try this trips formation here to the near side. Collicott trying to run to the outside. Not much room at all. Charlie Opie was there. Seal that play off. 4.0 student read his keys well, came running up and filled that gap real well. Yeah, we've seen that several times tonight where they'll send trips to one side of the formation and Collicott will either run a draw. This time he tried to sweep to the outside and Pirates were right there. Well, Coach Swept Mike Lecker, down. Coach Mike Lecker, you know, has prepared these guys. Here's here's your key. If they're doing this, this is what the possibility is coming back with a different look. Third and six from the 44. Tevs stopped in the backfield. It'll be a loss. Back near the 42-yard line. Jones and Opie, Opie once again in on that stop. And so the Lions gifted a good field position, unable to do anything with it. And again, a credit to the Pirate defense. Well, the punt game for both teams has been a little bit shaky. And we have to see, you know, when is the super break going to come for both teams? Well, Pearson got a fingertip on the last punt. Low snap to Tevs. They don't bring a rush and that punt will flop down near the 40 yard line 17 yard punt Tebs shaking his head he knew he didn't have any rush that time had more time we will take our break just under five minutes to go here in the third tree nothing 
New Berlin Eisenhower on my 24. My 24 is welcome to new show to the daytime lineup that will have you talking. Karamo Brown gives insightful advice to his guests while exploring a variety of subjects. Watch Karamo weekdays at 10 on My 24. October National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And both teams, the students, and they're all pink tonight to support breast cancer survivors. On first down, they'll swing it out far side and quickly out of bounds with it. Carter Pearson on the catch. I say that was either Para. Yeah. Spiro Para was out there, dropped back in coverage. Well, he gave him a taste. He got that fumble. He wants that ball back. <laughs> he was able to pick up that fumble and rumble it inside the. 15-yard line, that set up the only score of our game. Linemen like to be able to tell coaches that they've misplayed them in terms <laughs> of position, and really I could have been a fullback coach. Loss of two, second and 12. They're on the near side. Pearson, on the Pearson taking it down. Collicott able to bring him down across the 45 out to the 47-yard line. Another third and manageable now. Gain of seven on the play as we take another look. Well, Pearson got honorable mention all conference honors as a running back last year. And so, Pewaukee likes to try to pound that ball. And so, the. Third and four. 47 yard line. First down, Shashelsik on the carry. The senior able to run right into Collicott, who's got six tackles tonight on the defensive side for New Berlin Eisenhower, a best electric service first down as we tick under four minutes to play here in this third quarter. You know, that short punt has kind of energized Pewaukee's offense. We're still seeing that offensive line start to get off, get a little more of a surge. Robert Stein will work in under center. Three-step drop. Fire sideline. Underthrown looking for Schill. He was double covered on the play. It was Dylan Penner, the nearest defender. The ball underthrown. And again with the wet field, a slick football. Congratulations to girls. Didn't have enough on that one. Well, in the year, uh, Owen is 43 for 64 for 792 yards with uh, 12 touchdowns, only two interceptions. But as we've mentioned, you know, running the ball is Pewaukee's forte. Second and 10 from the 46. Shelshik on the carry. Brought down by Yule and by Jaeger. Well, 
crucial third down here for Eisenhower, you know, because it'll determine what the uh, option's going to be for Pewaukee. And I would imagine if they're short, they'll go for it. I think it's four down territory right now. Trailing 3 nothing late here in the third. Third and six. Ball spotted on the right hash, 42-yard line. Stein back over the middle looking for Schill in and out of his hand incomplete. Penner again with the pass breakup. We'll set up fourth and six. Excellent play by Dylan. That time to break that pass up. Well, looking for the honorable mention all conference receiver in Schill and Penner again getting in there with the hand to break it up. And we'll see what Pewaukee draws up here. I think they will go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, the way this game's played out, you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. Daberstein from the gun. Swings it out. Met immediately. Carter Pearson short of the first down. James Yeager read that play beautifully. Got it in to make the stop. Little swing pass look on that one, and he read that so well. Came roaring up to make the stop. So Pewaukee turns it over on downs at the 46-yard line of New Berlin Eisenhower. Well, when Coach Kern filled out his information sheet for me this week, he said, you know, on paper, we're the underdog. But he said, we don't play the game on paper. So uh, he's got to be pleased. He said this senior class has really reacted well after not having great success as underclassmen. First and 10 from the 46. Alicott will hand it off. Spinning out of one tackle is Clark. Still moving the pile to midfield. You know, about six on the play. Zach Clark. 5'8", 170 is senior. Also a wrestler. That's why he can carry that extra three, four yards. That low center of gravity, getting your leverage and able to take his shots. Your duck under becomes yeah. an offensive running back for his play. Under two minutes to go here in the third. Second and six from midfield. Hole up the middle, Luke Wagner. He'll get the first down to the 40 yard line of Pewaukee. Gain of 10. Andrew Jones making the stop along with Dams. Nice little move there as he got to the hole. Yeah, scooted a little nice lateral move to cut up through that hole. Best electric service, first down for the Lions at the Pirate 40-yard line. Offensive coordinator Jim Crowley trying to piece together, you know, what's going to work here? What's going to help us get this ball down the field? Wagner in motion. Give us to Clark. Gets a couple before he's driven back. On oh, a late flag. Unnecessary roughness will be the call there as it was after the whistle. But I'll tell you what, that was very close to the echo of the whistle. Right. And that's yeah. what you're taught to play. You know, I have to see a replay on this, it, you know. Once again, you know, player safety is a concern. In a tight game, I'm not so sure I would make that call. Kind of momentum yes. is making you fall, and so yeah. it looks worse, worse than, than it, it is. is. You're right. Under a minute to go, the 15-yard penalty will move it 
down to the 25 yard line. Collicott tried to cut back at the left hash. We'll take it inside the 20 and they've reached the Salvation Army red zone for the second time tonight. Kind of a Carter quarterback, Pearson. Kind of a quarterback power that yep. time, running off tackle. Carter Pearson on the stop. That's a pickup of eight yards, brings you second down and two. So a gain of eight sets up a second and two. We'll see if the Lions will snap this off here in the final seconds of this third quarter. And they will hold it till the fourth. We've played three here at New Berlin Eisenhower High School. The Lions on top of Pewaukee, three nothing, but are in the Salvation Army red zone when we return. With a pair of Hall of Famers, Terry Kelly, Mike McGivern, John Weiser with you. Fourth quarter here from New Berlin Eisenhower. Lions up 3 nothing from the 16 of Pewaukee, second down and two. Try and go up the middle and not much there by Collicott. Should have enough for the first down and he does. Best electric first down. So now, fresh set of downs here at the 14-yard line. As they look to go up by two scores here. Now of Clark in the backfield. Give this to Clark, and he is Clark met immediately here. across the line of scrimmage. And this drive aided by that unnecessary roughness call. Yeah, that was a big call in terms of giving Eisenhower a little bit better position. We'll see if we try a waggle pass here. That's something they mentioned yep. that Collicott, he's you know, not a prolific passer, but one of the things they do, and offensive coordinator Jim Crowley, you know, is probably, you know, saying, okay, what do we do to kind of throw Milwaukee off stride here? Second down and Tebs back in at a running back. Along with Luke Wagner. They'll flank Collicott, working from the pistol. Tebs trying to right side. Looks like he'll get about three. He'll set up a third and a long six here. Carter Pearson in on his seventh tackle tonight. Third down and six. So now the question is on this play, are you going to play to try to set up a field goal 
Or do you say, hey, I don't know if being up 6-0 is what we need. We, may, we need a score to get a two-score lead. Wagner and Tevs, either side of Collicott, the quarterback. Collicott right, pass tipped at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Well, Pewaukee saw that coming, and the Pirate defense comes up big. Bockerman, who hit from 27 earlier in the first half, somewhat similar position here. Very close to the same distance. But we talked about Pewaukee's pensions for being able to block kicks. This will be a 26-yard attempt from the right hash. Very little wind for Luke Bockerman. Aiden Vanderboom on the hold. The kick is away, and the kick is good. Just cleared the crossbar. Two for two tonight is Bockerman. Three for four on the season, and it's a 6 nothing Lion lead. Well, it's time for our Milwaukee Admiral hit of the game, and it was on the previous drive here in the second half. As we'll take a look here. Milwaukee facing a fourth down, tried the swing pass, and there it was. The hit of the game provided by James Yeager. He Read that play well. He arrived almost at the instant the ball touched his fingertips. Our hit of the game this season has been brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals home opener next Saturday here on My24. Now one of the plays Pewaukee kept working on during practice on Wednesday was the counter. We'll have to see if they're going to go to that, find some way to get an explosive play and get that ball downfield. Bark, uh, Borkman, Farah, and Brayer, your deep receivers here for Pewaukee. in and out ran into his own man Ewell will get credited with the stop once again we go to the sideline Mike McGivern with some special guests tonight hey, uh, guys these are special guests for sure Laney does not want to talk but it's too bad because her dad works for channel 24 and, and I'm making her talk this is the 6th grade class from Elmwood. Elmwood Elementary School. Yeah. Lady, Lady's a student athlete. So we, we're all student athletes. Your favorite subject is? Math. How good's the volleyball team? Good. Yeah? Hey, guys, so I understand you're you're the candy freak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're giving candy all over the place. Yeah, I threw one to some uh, seventh grader, and he stole it from me. Stole it. Guys, this is a good group. They've been together a long time. And you know what? A really nice group of sixth graders. Boys, back to you. Between Andy and Sean, they're the candy thieves up here tonight. They got a whole bowl to, of candy over here. They're both loading up. Have to thank the folks from Eisenhower for putting that there, <laughs> but uh, I'm they sure might. their doctors are going to be checking on their sugar content now for these two guys. Nice run by Pearson to pick up the first down. Yeah, he's needed. giving them a little spark this yes, fourth quarter. From the 35. Try and run it again, Pearson. Ewell was right there. See where they spot it right at the line of scrimmage, maybe just over. Second down and nine upcoming for Pewaukee. Now the clock starting to become a factor here as we slide under nine minutes to play. Yeah, that tackle by Chase Ewell, you know, Coach uh, mentioned, Coach Kern, that. You know, a little undersized, 5'11", 174, and he says he's probably a little lighter than that as the season's worn on. But he said the guy is undersized, but he's really tough. Second and nine from the 36. (laughs) 
up the middle. And a first down. Andrew Jones on the carry. Will get the first down for Pewaukee. Brought down by Matt Collicott, his seventh tackle tonight. And remember, he's playing as a quarterback, so he he has been a very, very busy young man. Jones leads the team in rushing over 500 yards on the season. Another best electric service first down at the 46. Jones gets the call again, another eight yard pickup. A little bit of rhythm now for that Pirate offense, Aiden Vanderboom there to make the stop. I imagine Coach Frisky has challenged his team to say, all right, we know what we can do and we haven't been doing it so far this evening, so now is the time. Second down and two. Not only that, they've been ahead of the chains here on this drive. That sets up a few more things that they can do offensively. And now we're trying to see who's more fatigued at this point in the game. Pounded again to Jones. First down and more inside the 40-yard line. Jaeger right there to make the stop. Collicott also there. Pewaukee starting to gain some traction now offensively. Well, they've been trying to do a little rotation in that front four for Eisenhower, bumping guys in, trying to make sure they can, you know, withstand this onslaught that uh, Pewaukee is providing. Jones, five carries now for 39 yards. First and 10 from the 37. They'll call his number again. He'll get up into that second and third level, pick up of about seven for Andrew Jones. Once again, Jaeger and Collarcott, the two defenders to make the stop. But those successful first down plays, yep. you know, we mentioned that it is one of the keys Second to the game that, three. you know, Pewaukee thought they needed to do is to be efficient on first down. They have on this drive, second down and three. Pearson, nice cutback, but taken down near the marker. Let's see where they spot it. No gain. So third and three. Luke Wagner was there. Well, a critical third down. No doubt four down territory here for the Pirates. They're facing a third and three at the New Berlin 30-yard line. Justin Frisky, who also is the offensive coordinator. Let's see what he dials up here. I go back to Jones. They do. Jones will get the first down near the 25-yard line. Dylan Penner on the stop. Well, that teammate you're usually looking for at this point in the game, Mr. Momentum, starting to play a role. Well, it's been the, this drive has been the Andrew Jones drive so far for Pewaukee. He's been carrying the mail here. Picking up three first downs here on this drive. From the 24, first and 10. Robertstein wants to pass. Fade to the back of the end zone. Catch is made. Touchdown, Pewaukee! Shill with the catch. Well, that's having confidence in your sophomore quarterback. Pound, 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 and then you float one on a fade. A sensational grab, just in bounds, just across the goal line. Right in front of Dylan Penner. Kaiser for the extra point. It's no good. It deflected off the right upright. And we remain tied at six. Just over five minutes to play. One more look at the touchdown grab by Schill. Mano Imano. 
with Dylan Penner, and Schill wins the battle. Well, we mentioned Schill got mentioned last year as a you know wide receiver, and you can see why. We'll take a break. Just over five minutes remain. A tie ball game. Week nine of Friday Night Rivals on My24. Between justice and revenge lies a town full of colorful, ca colorful characters with their own agendas. Venture into the Old West with new rules. Deepen the Walker legacy and settle up for the new series Walker Independence. Thursday nights at 8 on CW18. Well, you're chasing momentum. You got momentum. Now what do you do with it if you're Pewaukee? Falling down, making the catch on the return was Dylan Penner. He was lucky he did not get flagged for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Usually you can't spike the football. can't spike the ball, but I think the official may be erred in saying he's not showing displeasure with a call, anything like that. It's his own, you know, anger directed at what he did. At the 12-yard line is where the Lions will start this drive. Pewaukee tying it up on a shill touchdown grab at the goal line. Extra point was missed. Now Eisenhower with an opportunity. Collicott looks to throw, dumps it off. Complete to Tebbs. Tebbs will be short of the first down, gain of about eight on the play. Brought down by Matt Kuglich. They'll spot it at the 17, a gain of five, second down and five. Blitzing linebacker that time, bearing down. That was Ryan, actually a defensive end, Ryan Sandvik on a stunt that time. Trying to chase down the quarterback, Collicott. Second and five from the 17. Try and run it up the middle, and nothing there for Tebbs. So no gain on the play. Sets up third and five. Four minutes to play here in the fourth. Well, here's where you're going with the play you think can get you that first down. It's Collicott. And he's not going to get there. Going to be stopped shy of the 20-yard line. Clock continues to roll here. Three and a half minutes to play in a tie game. Fourth and three. The Lions will be forced to punt. Schill, who caught that touchdown pass, standing at midfield, the punt returner for the Pirates. Well, Pewaukee got a piece of one punt earlier. We'll have to see if they're going to bring the house again this time. Carter Pearson got his fingertips on a punt earlier gets this one away show will let it bounce and it goes out of bounds now it stayed in at the 49 yard line of New Berlin Eisenhower so 257 remaining 
Pewaukee has two timeouts. They got some offensive spark out of Andrew Jones on that last drive. That's helped set up that touchdown pass from Doberstein to Logan Schill. Well, Pewaukee got the ball back. Good field position. See who's going to be able to dig down just a little bit deeper and get that critical play. Again, both teams eligible for playoffs. Pewaukee at 5-1 and one in the conference. Eisenhower at 4-2. and two. So This game for some seeding. Jones, the left side, will get about five. Luke Wagner, outside linebacker on that wide side, able to make the stop. Well, we mentioned Jones having good speed, and you saw him plant that foot, turn it upfield. But now the clock becomes the ally of Eisenhower trying to stop this. But I don't know if you want to have that idea of playing for overtime. Robert Stein in at her center. Jones again. Jones with the carry. He has been a force here in this fourth quarter. So just shy of the first down, sets up third and one. Nick Foster was there to make the tackle. Nine carries now for 62 yards for the senior, Andrew Jones. Third and one. Jones, second effort, forward progress. We'll see where they spot it. The officials are looking, and it's a first down. Clock will stop to reset the chains with a minute 43 left here in the fourth. Well, coming up, following the game, stay tuned for the United States Marine Corps Player of the Game presentation. That'll be brought to you by the United States Marines. First and 10 from the 39. Jones. Met in the backfield right at the line of scrimmage. Still moving the pile forward. Getting extra yardage. He's going to check himself out to get a breather here. There's a nice run and a timeout taken here by Justin Frisky. He'll have one remaining. 107 to go. Facing a second and short. When play resumes, as you see Frisky, the head coach, out there to talk to his team, he's also the offensive coordinator. Gentlemen, with an interesting background, I don't know if we've had another coach uh, on any of our broadcast whose first coaching position was in Japan. So uh, Justin has been a head coach before at Pius before coming to Pewaukee and uh, worked at a couple of other schools. Special education teacher at Pewaukee. Has done a wonderful job since he's been there. Winning a state title last year at Division Three. Again, their only losses this year, non-conference to a very good Brookfield Central team and CMH. CMH. You know, a year ago they lost to Fort Washington and then CMH and then, you know, started their role. So I'm sure, you know, they're eager to get to the playoffs see if they can duplicate flags stop the play here and it's going to go against new berlin i believe let's see offside defense five yard penalty first down a costly penalty that will turn into a first down for pewaukee now pewaukee has one timeout left plenty of time Still get this ball into position either for a field goal or to drive it in for a touchdown. Robert Stein under center. The reverse. Pearson left side. Gain of about eight. Brought down by Matt Collicott, the quarterback who's also playing safety tonight. Ten tackles tonight for Collicott. Clock continues to roll here, 42 seconds to play. 
tie game. Pewaukee facing a second and four from the 21 of New Berlin Eisenhower. Again, this is Pearson lost his footing. And Pewaukee will be forced to take their final timeout. Fell down. Luke Wagner was right there, but Pearson wanted to cut back and lost his footing. Now we'll see if Justin Frisky decides to try to throw that ball again to Schill. So he tried to get the edge and plant that right foot, and it just flew out from underneath him. Yeah, that was the play, that little fade to the corner of the end zone. Luke they've Wagner. Had, yeah, they've had Penner out there on him all night. Yeah. So it's been interesting yeah. to watch those two battles. So Luke Wagner was in good position and forced a uh, player to slip that time. So the Pirates out of timeouts. Lions have all three remaining. Got a pair of field goals, 27-yard and 26-yard field goals for New Berlin Eisenhower. And then the 19-yard pass that Schill caught for the touchdown. They'll try it again, looking for Schill in traffic. Touchdown, Pewaukee! Schill between two defenders hauled it in. Another look. And he came down with it. He bobbled it momentarily, but he hauled it in when he needed to. Extra point is up, and it is good. 13-6, Pirates. A pair of touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. Doberstein to Logan Schill. Here's another look. The play fake. Unbelievable catch. Great concentration on the bobble, part of Schill. Bobbled it up for a second, <laughs> came down, landed on his back, but had control of the ball. You see the defender oh. rip it out, but once you're down... Get one more look here, different angle. Hey, do you know what we do at the end here? Just a reminder, folks, playoffs start next week. We will find out tomorrow morning uh, where that game is. He had be control. We will be in the playoffs. Yep. We'll you can see the ball in his belly. Great job by our camera crew all season just, long. Just <laughs> excellent that time. They have done a fantastic job this season, our My24 sports crew. We've had a lot of fun. We hope you've enjoyed it along the way as well. Yeah, we pointed out that uh, going into tonight, 13 of uh, the teams we've had this season have qualified for the playoffs. There was a chance for three more teams to make it in, which would be unbelievable to have six, 16 of the 18 teams we've featured. So a real compliment to those teams, their coaches. Schools involved. And it's always fun piecing this schedule together. That's the challenge, right? Oh. Love that challenge. Kaiser. Line drive kick. Returnable. <laughs> Smothered. Short of the 35 yard line. Well, let's see what Eisenhower can do. They need a touchdown. They have 11 seconds, but they have three timeouts. <laughs> yep, they're going to play. Yep, five deep. 
a timeout taken by Eisenhower. Yeah, they knew they weren't going to need three timeouts in this 11 seconds. Well, Coach Kern wanted to see what they were going to do. Jim Crowley, the offensive coordinator, waited to see what the defense was going to look like. Saw the five deep and says, okay, we've got chances here. If you're going to keep it middle of the field, you've got to be sure you're past the first down stick because, again, the clock stops to reset the chains. You know, you think about, you know, hook and lateral, you know, something we've seen done before, but when you're playing five DBs deep, that kind of takes away that, that opportunity. In the final game of the regular season, different format tomorrow morning will be a selection show on Bally Sports Wisconsin. With our friends there and the reveal of the playoff field tomorrow morning starting at 10. Colicott comes back near side, completes on the hook and lateral. They tried it. They tried. Jaeger with the catch, then pitched it back to Penner. They'll get the first down with five seconds to play. What a game Collicott has played here. Oh, uh, yeah. You're, 11 tackles tonight. Both these teams with multiple guys going both ways. You know, kind of what football used to be. Yeah. You know, it wasn't platoon. And uh, I think we mentioned before, Coach Curran, especially proud of these seniors because they had struggled as underclassmen. And obviously, you see Coach Frisky urging his guys on. You know, they've, they've established a program that expects to win. And I think both teams in a league that is more of their realm as far as enrollment and playing ability with right. this I mean, Parkland Conference. The top four teams are, are in that you know league are pretty close, and it's... Uh, that would be CMH, Pewaukee, New Berlin West, New Berlin Eisenhower. Throw Tosa West in there over the last couple of years, last too. Last couple of years. From the 43, first and 10 Lions. Five seconds to play, trailing by seven. Again, they'll throw it middle of the field. The lateral. And Pewaukee will stop Aiden Vanderboom, and that is your ball game. The Pewaukee Pirates. Late touchdowns here in the fourth. Pull this one out 13 to 6. So for the Pirates. Six and one in the conference, seven and two overall. Eisenhower falls to four and three in the Parkland, six and three overall. Your final, Pewaukee 13, New Berlin Eisenhower six. Stay tuned for our post game show. We'll have our Marine Corps player of the game and the Champions Trophy presentation when we return to New Berlin Eisenhower right after this. <laughs> Two shill, please. Yes, unanimous up here.
what you're doing with Wes. They lost that receiver tonight. I heard. Got hurt. You heard that already? Yeah. Up. I know. Oh, that's hard, isn't it? Tremendous comeback here in the fourth quarter, down 6 nothing. Pewaukee gets a couple of touchdowns late, the final one coming with under a minute to play as they pull out a 13-6 victory over New Berlin Eisenhower. The man of the hour for Pewaukee is standing by with our own Mike McGivern. Guys, he kind of is the man of the hour right there. And, and uh, look, he, he said, look, I bobbled a little bit, but I caught that ball. And uh, he said, look, give me a minute because I'm a little bit tired. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to be so proud of the way this team hung in there. Yeah, you know, in the first half, we didn't come out with the energy that we wanted. But in the second half, you know, we put our foot to the gas, all, all gas, no breaks. We dug in deep, and we got it done. Hey, um, when, when you play, look, you're, you punted the ball really well tonight, right? That ball goes up in the air as a receiver. Is, is, the only thing in your mind is go get it, right? Just be aggressive, go catch the football. Man, I'll tell you, you got to love that. Hey, um, as a, a Marine, our Marine player of the game, you got to love a kid that says, look, as a team, we decided to put the medal on, let's go, and then go get the ball so my team can win and we don't have to go to overtime. He sounds like a Marine to me. No, I, I love that winning attitude, right? He said, all gas, no brakes, young Matt LaFleur over here. But really, uh -huh. he's, uh, he's more of a young Greg Jennings put the team on his back. So, brother, really, uh, really proud of you. Good job tonight carrying your team. Really proud. Major Olson, thanks a lot for being part of this, as always. It's my pleasure. All right, U.S. Point. Marine Player of the Game, Logan Schill, back to you, boys. Yeah. Yeah. To Logan Schill, again, coming up big here in the fourth quarter, and here are his highlights tonight. This is the first of two touchdown grabs. This one, the 24-yarder. The extra point was missed. We're tied at six, and then with under a minute to go, they go back. And dial up number two again. High points the ball between two defenders and hauls it in for the game-winning touchdown for Pewaukee. And they get to 6-1 and one in the league with that victory here tonight. 7-2 and two overall. Congratulations to Logan Schill, the senior, our Marine Corps player of the game. Time now for our final Champions Trophy presentation of the year. Once again, here's Mike. You know, Coach, I always, uh, I always look at teams that find a way to win, like you guys did tonight, as a, as a team that's really well coached. They hang together, and they just look for that one opportunity, and they, they go and take it. you got to be so proud of these boys. Unbelievably proud. Uh, we just talked about at halftime that we need to be more physical and believe in each other, trust in each other, and just play for one another. And the fourth quarter was exactly an example of that. I, I can't be any prouder of a group that was able to dig deep and, and get it done. And, you know, we, we rely on our seniors. And Andrew Jones, Matt Shashelshik, and then Logan I mean, they all delivered big in the fourth quarter along with all their guys up front. Coach, I can tell you being on this side, they said it a couple of times in the last 30 seconds. They're going to take a shot. They're going to take a shot. we got to make sure we get back. They're going to take that shot. And you guys took the shot. And, and you know what? Number, number two just went up and got it. He's the best receiver in the league. Maybe the best receiver in the state. Uh, we're going to take a shot. Dang right. Yeah. Because we got a guy back there that's going to track it down and, and bring it in. Hey, you heard that, right? All right, U.S. Marine, they're saying maybe the best in the state, and, and he does not give away those kind of words easily. Coach, congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. It's great seeing you. Thanks, Mike. Pleasure to have us. Thank you so much for having us on tonight. You bet, boys. Congratulations, Pewaukee. Uh, good luck the rest of the way. Oh Let us God. out of here. <laughs> might not be a conference championship, but might be a springboard to a state championship. Who knows? Work, worked last year. Certainly did. We'll take our final break and a final word on the season when we return to New Berlin Eisenhower. 13 6 Pirates over the Lions.
couldn't ask for a fitting game to close out our regular season here on my 24 and our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals. 13-6 right down to the final minute with Pewaukee pulling it out, Coach. Well, two teams that both demonstrated that they can be reckoned, have to be reckoned with in the playoffs. And again, the playoff field will be revealed tomorrow morning and will be posted by noon tomorrow. And you'll be able to check your favorite team, find out where they're playing, who's hosting, and who gets the one seed all the way through. Big thank you once again to all of our sponsors who bring you Friday Night Rivals all season long, especially Heiser Automotive Group and Landmark Credit Union, our title sponsors again this year, the Army National Guard, Best Electric Service, Carthage College, the Salvation Army, United States Marine Corps, LifeLock, Planet Fitness, the Milwaukee Admirals. Good luck to the Admirals as their season gets underway. GlaxoSmithKline, Menards, and Community Advocates. Our game will be replayed tomorrow at 5, immediately following the HBCU Game of the Week, which will feature Florida A&M against Grambling State. That game will kick off at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Well, it's been fun. It, it's been a marvelous year, a privilege to work again with you, John, and you know Paul Rudolph, our producer, Jason Ruck, and his fantastic group. And I, I do have to give special mention to my wife, Peg, who helps us yeah, with so much of the administrative work, and my son, Tim, who's got some manipulations he can do to help get our graphics ready. Also want to thank Sean Raffaelli, our, sponsor, or our spotter most of this year. Eamon, Andy, Hall, Eamon Hallahan. Eamon Hallahan and this Andy guy right here, he has done a fantastic job all season long running well, the numbers. Well, he knows how to juggle his numbers. He's proven that on his tax returns, and so we, we probably <laughs> see that. Big thanks to also our camera crew and all of our uh, men and women on the My24 Sports crew who set up and take down each and every week. And uh, tonight we'll have to do it on a little bit of a wet and cold evening. But Pewaukee wins it here. New Berlin Eisenhower as they knock off the Lions 13-6. to We thank you for tuning in all season long. Look for us again next year on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. For Mike McGivern, Terry Kelly, and our entire My24 Sports crew, I'm John Weiser bidding you a very pleasant good evening from New Berlin. <laughs>